Qantas is the flag carrier of Australia, home to those cute, bouncy kangaroos. But sadly, their reputation has been tarnished over the last few years as they cut costs to recover from the pandemic, causing annoyance amongst travellers and their frequent flyers. Two years on, and have they recovered or are they still chasing their tail? Let's find out. In today's video, we're also flying on Qantas in the Airbus A380, which is always exciting. And I've slightly treated myself. I am still in economy, but I've gone for the best seat in the house. More on what is nicknamed the throne in a bit. In the meantime, I'm making my way from the Moxie, which is just next to the domestic terminal and catching the Metro one stop to the international terminal. Unfortunately, the shuttle bus from the airport was fully booked, so I've had to walk to the domestic terminal and there's an easy train transfer. It takes about four minutes. I could check in as an economy passenger, but it looks pretty busy. Even the business class queue, which is just around the corner, had a line. But as I'm one with emeralds or platinum in the world of Qantas, I can walk behind a very elusive and beautiful marble wall and get checked in straight away. I can appreciate that if you're traveling in a commie, you probably don't have one world status and you probably can't use the lounge, but I am in desperate need of a tea. So I'll keep this short and I'll do a separate review for the lounge. Visiting the lounge has been on my bucket list for about eight years now. And having been, it was incredible. Relaxing and visually stunning. Huge windows and a structure made of huge pieces of wood and white marble. I hate to think how much this cost to build and the food was clever, fun and exciting. So what an incredible experience, that is such a nice lounge. Let's have a look at today's journey. QF11 departs Sydney at 11.10 in the morning, covering a mind-blowing 7,502 miles in just under 14 hours. Heading off to the gate, there is plenty to do. Check out a kangaroo, eat and drink, and of course, watch the planes. London Heathrow is a great place to check out Airbus A380s, but Sydney's no slouch, served by Emirates, Qantas, Singapore and Asiana. But it's also Chinese New Year, and it's Year of the Dragon, which is pretty exciting. Speaking of shopping, if you're looking for a last minute gift, who doesn't like biscuit wrapped in chocolate? and Tim Tam is one of Australia's best products. If you're wondering about the cost of the flight, well, it was far more expensive to fly from LAX to Sydney than the other way around, which was important at the time because I was traveling around the entire world only on the A380. If you haven't seen the video, I'll post it on the end. Needless to say, I loved every moment. Yes, the jet lag was horrendous, and would I do it again? Pr probably not. Today's Qantas flight will be operated by VH0QL, which is 13 years old and unfortunately, for my lack of travel adapters, has not yet been refurbished. I'll explain why this was a source of frustration a little bit later. Depending on the airline, the layout and configuration can be very different. Much like their one wall partner, British Airways, the lower and front section is exclusively first class passengers followed by three sections of economy. The best seats on any airplane are the exit rows, which give a lot of legroom. On the A380, there is one seat which is debated as being the best in the house. 70D is an oddity, because due to a floor access panel in front, there's no seat, and that provides an extra entire seat's worth of legroom. Naturally, Qantas charges through the roof for this setting you back an eye-watering £105, oh my god. Besides remembering how much I paid for the seat, let's not talk about it, I was feeling pretty good, because I ended up with the entire row to myself. How lucky is that? 
the economy seats have a seat pitch of 31 inches and a width of 17.5, which is slightly smaller than Singapore Airlines and as you know every inch counts. The seats on the plus side are comfortable and modern, so I'm hoping Qantas doesn't bend these when they refurbish the plane. What did frustrate me though was the lack of universal plug socket, opting only for an Australian option. I guess you could call it lucky, but there is a USB-A plug socket in the armrest. But when I used it, my phone advised me it would take in excess of six hours. For economy, this is a very chic little amenity kit, which I really hope people keep and reuse. This contains a disposable toothbrush, a slightly on the small side eye mask, and some earplugs. Over the ear headphones usually provide better sound, but because of the way these ones are built, they don't sit snugly against your entire ear. And as for the entertainment, let's hope the layout is changed on the refurbished planes, because it's certainly functional, but not overly visually exciting. You can probably tell from the video, but the system isn't very responsive, and sometimes I had to forcibly press it a few times before waiting patiently. Once it did load, the content is pretty similar to every other airline. Not hugely extensive, but more than enough content. And also did really appreciate that Qantas adopted for the tail cam. The cabin was a little bit chilly, but no problem because I had four blankets at my disposal. Perhaps a glass of Sauvignon Blanc will help to distract from the temperature. The wine is probably unlikely to win any awards, but it's quite full of flavour and didn't scratch the back of my throat. And this was served with a starter. I know, in economy, brilliant. Carrots, yum, celery, yuck. But it comes with three olive dip and some posh crackers. Even before the main course arrived, I was pretty impressed. Qantas has opted for environmentally friendly wooden cutlery. Our main course was a hearty mashed potato, greens, beef and gravy, which comes with focaccia bread. The beef had a lovely consistency and flavour, and the bread was perfect to enjoy the remaining gravy. Mrs Doubtfire is a funny film and a classic movie, and what could be better to enjoy the movie than a vanilla ice cream wrapped in lovely milk chocolate. It truly is all about the simple things in life. The meal was done and dusted, or so I thought, because Qantas then hands out a Tim Tam. I was going to eat it, but then decided I would share this with Brent. And just in case you were still thirsty, a choice of tea or coffee. While the technology and LEDs are in abundance, these are still very grey and white boxes, and they could be far more exciting. Then again, you probably only spend about 30 minutes at most in here over the course of a flight. With 10 hours remaining, I try to make the most of those four seats, but in all honesty, with the armrests that don't go all the way up and the contoured shape of the seat, it was fairly uncomfortable. And eventually I just gave up, settling into some never-ending series on Paramount. Top of the hour, time for the morning news. But of course there is no news yet, everyone's still asleep in their comfy, comfy beds. Good night, everybody. If you find yourself in the same position, the cabin crew will happily make you a glass of water or a cup of tea, and there were snacks throughout the cabin. This is a pretty long flight, so with six hours to go, the cabin crew came round to those still awake and provided a Portuguese chicken mango lime ciabatta. Warm, soft and pretty tasty. Travel is glorious but it can often fluctuate between the best thing in the world and mental torture. So with three hours to go, how did I feel? With my fifth, or was it sixth, who knows, trip to the bathroom, the lights have been raised in the cabin, signifying the beginning of breakfast and my soon-to-be freedom off this airplane. The breakfast is pretty much what you'd expect in economy sausage, omelette, baked beans, bacon, and little square potatoes. This also came with a choice of drink, 
and a good looking muffin. Usually, I try to end the video with some pretty landing footage, but that's hard for a mid row seat, so we'll skip right ahead to the conclusion. If you could afford it, even with the eye washing cost, the extra leg room or 70D will make a difference to your comfort. It probably won't help with sleep though, because sitting upright is just so unnatural. I was really impressed with the meal service. It's more than I needed, and the choice were well thought out, delicious, and have a good round dietary requirement. I can't help but feel though I would still probably pick Singapore Airlines, purely because the seat is a little bit larger. But the experience was good, the flight was on time, and I didn't really find anything to complain about. And if you're still not sure who to fly, you can check out our other reviews on board the Airbus A380, with British Airways from Los Angeles to London, Qatar from Doha to Bangkok, and Singapore Airlines from Hong Kong to Sydney via Singapore. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching to the end.